Grocery shopping in Steubenville, Ohio in the 1970s is nothing like it is today. It was a nightmare, a very long, drawn-out process. We often shopped downtown. The three major grocery stores that I remember the most, Kroger's, Loblaws, and the A&P. You might choose the Kroger's because it was next to Treasure Island. Do some retail shopping, get a Treasure Island hot dog, and then get your groceries. At one point, so many people were taking the buggies home from Kroger's, they decided to pound in giant metal pipes so the buggies couldn't leave the sidewalk. This caused endless traffic jams, pulling up to the store and loading up the car. For that, they would have to send out pickup trucks to pick up all the buggies around the downtown area that people took home. You might choose the store based on redemption stamps, like S&H Green stamps. I still have the tennis racket. My family often chose Loblaws. It was the only store that had a couch in front of the store where men could sit, mostly because grocery shopping was woman's work. If you saw a guy shopping, you thought, bachelor, his wife is sick, or his wife must be dead. First problem was getting to the store. On a Friday night, the town was in gridlock. It would take about a half hour just to move around a few streets. At this time, there was no Washington Street, also no underpass under the train tracks. I spent a good chunk of my youth waiting for the train to work its way through town. Once you got to Loblaws, then you had to circle around the lot waiting for a parking place. Space was at a premium back then. You would follow someone to their car and wait for them to pack up their groceries. My dad, always making the same joke, why don't you get out and help them? Now you found a space. The next thing you had to do before going in the store was find a buggy. This was because you were returning pop bottles. A case had eight bottles at 10 cents a bottle, so 80 cents a case. And you probably waited till you had three or four cases to take them back. Minimum wage was something like $1.60. You had to take them back. Imagine today having to put a $5 deposit on a case of pop. Once in the store, you had to get in line at the service desk. There was a line because they cashed paychecks. Worse, if it was the third, all the seniors had their social security checks. No direct deposit back then, and a line at the bank could take you up to 40 minutes. Loblaws would give you a little token that you could use as money in the store. I think it was worth like 50 cents. This was to make sure you'd buy something. Now you got your money, you would either leave pop bottles in the buggy near the desk, or take them back at the store and put them on little rollers that would whisk them away. Finally, time to start shopping. First stop was the vegetables and fruit. More waiting. There was no scales at checkout, so you had to find an employee to weigh and mark your produce. Since my dad had to have a cut-up banana over his Cheerios, we waited. I never understood why eat the most flavorless cereal, only to have to doctor it up. But this led to my mother buying Raisin Bran, so I was allowed to pick out my own box of cereal. A kid picking out a box of cereal in the 1970s was hard work. You'd be drawn into the ones with cartoon characters, like Tony the Tiger and the little Martian guy on Quisp. Then you checked out what the toys were inside. No sending in box tops. Got burned with that before. We did not shy away from the word sugar. We knew we liked sugar. It was in the title. Sugar Pops. Sugar Smacks. They got rid of the word in the title, but kept the sugar. I guess we're just stupid. Now they have like 30 words and phrases for sugar, like beet juice. As you worked your way through the store, my job was to make sure every item had a price sticker. No scanners back then. So, by hand, every item got a sticker that had four little tears, one on each side, so it was self-destruct if you tried to take it off and put it on a more expensive item. God have mercy on your soul if you got in line and they had to call for a price check. Nothing like that sound in the back of you when when that happened. People had to buy a lot. Family ate most meals at home. McDonald's didn't have a drive through yet, and Mom didn't have a car. Family ate three meals a day, so buggies were piled high. Another job of mine, keeping stuff from falling out or eggs and bread getting crushed. After you got all your food, you checked the promotional kiosk. This is where they sold things like encyclopedias. The first one was always nine cents. A new letter would come out each week to keep you coming back to the store. My mom would find a better sale elsewhere, and that would throw off my collection. I think everyone in town got the first one for nine cents. 
I now wonder how many teachers were curious as to why kids kept turning in all their reports and writing class on subjects that started with the letter A, aardvarks, ants, America. Sometimes the kiosks had plate collections, always with the blue willow pattern. You can look it up on the internet what it looks like. Every house in Stoneville had something with it on. My mother loathed that pattern. At checkout, you waited and waited and then you waited. To make things worse, people were allowed to smoke in line. It was their God-given right and we were Americans. So breathing could be a chore. You had to wash your clothes when you got home. I put a load in my grandmother's cigarette one night. Load, L-O-A-D-S. They were like a little small piece of wood that explodes when you light them. She lit up in line and the whole store stopped to see what happened. I nearly died first of laughter. And then later that night, my grandmother chasing me around with a wooden spoon. They actually played over the loudspeakers, not to smoke in the stores near the food. Everything was rung up by hand. Large filled grocery buggies, packing the car with the bags, all paper in the back seat and on my lap, and then later unloading the car. Fighting your way back out of town, maybe stopping at Burger Chef or DiCarlo's across from the police station. Often missing the beginning of Chico and the Man or whatever sitcom that me and my peer group was watching at the time. We are talking a three-hour adventure, a three-hour nightmare, and we'd have to do it all again next week. I wouldn't mind going back and doing it maybe one more time with my mom and my dad, but honestly, we are living in a much better time. As always, it's me, Camroy, here on YouTube. <laughs>